Hi, I'm John Beckett, Druid, Priest, and Writer. Regular spiritual practice is the core of any good religion or spirituality. Prayer, meditation, offerings, all those things we do to build and maintain good relationships with our gods, our ancestors, the other spirits with whom we share this world, and with our sacred traditions. Done well, this need not take an inordinate amount of time. My own practice is centered around a few minutes early in the morning, a few minutes at noon, a few minutes before dinner, and a few more minutes right before bed. But what if you're called to more? What if your gods ask you for more? What if you just want more? You may be feeling a call to monasticism. Now, when we start talking about monks and nuns, monasteries and convents, most of us either think about Catholics or Buddhists. Now, both of those religions have a long tradition of monasticism, and there's much we can learn from them. But monasticism is not limited to any one or two religions. It can be practiced in the context of most any religion, including our modern pagan and polytheist religions. We don't have to take vows of silence or vows of poverty. We don't have to move into a monastery somewhere, which is a good thing because there aren't very many of them. I started working on what would become this class almost a year ago because I was called to deepen my practice and to build something that would be a refuge against all the turmoil in our contemporary world. Along the way, I've encountered several other people doing similar things, some of them in similar ways, some of them in very different ways. Earlier this year, a book came out, Polytheistic Monasticism, which is an excellent collection of stories of different people practicing monasticism within a pagan polytheistic context. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers for me, much less for everybody else. Along the way, I've learned what questions to ask and how to go about exploring some of the answers, trying them on, seeing what works for me and what might work for you. And so now I am honored to invite you to the seventh online course from Under the Ancient Oaks, Pagan Monasticism as a Solitary Practitioner. So what are our goals for this course? First, we want to do an introduction to monastic practices. What did the Buddhists do? What did the Catholics do? What did some of our ancient pagan ancestors do that might be relevant to this? Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Let's see what other people are doing. What, I want to present enough material that you can get an idea of what works for you and, and what doesn't work for you. We're hoping to support others on their journeys. Um, you probably have some friends who are doing something like this or who are trying to do something like this. And whether this ends up being something you devote yourself to or not, you will have people in your life who are trying to do it, and this will help you better understand what they're doing and how you can support them. The big thing I hope it will be is an entry point for those who are called to pagan monasticism. We're at the very early stages of building a monastic movement within paganism and polytheism, and we don't know where to start. This is one place to start. And if you go on and you decide, yes, 
I need to pursue this path. I need to become a pagan monk. I need to incorporate all these things into my daily life. Great. And if you don't, well, then you've learned some helpful practices that will be of benefit as you move forward in your life. What this course isn't, it's not a physical monastery. Uh, I don't have a physical monastery. I wish I did. I don't. It's not about vows of silence or poverty or anything of the sort. It's not a means of escaping the world. And I've done this before of saying, I'm just going to go off and live in a monastery because I'm tired of dealing with the, with the ordinary world. And, and some people need to do that. It's very difficult, particularly in this time and this culture that expects everybody to work 40 hours a week or more to, to try to earn their keep. Um, perhaps someday we will build some monasteries that will allow people to, to who really don't fit in well in the ordinary world to, to find some place where they do fit in. But for now, we don't have that. This course isn't that. It certainly isn't the one true way. One of the things you will learn in this course is that there are many different ways to be a pagan monk. Um, find the one that works for you. And again, we're not trying to turn everybody into pagan monks. Just because you sign up for this class, just because you work through this class, doesn't mean you're going to, to become a pagan monk. Maybe you will, but maybe you won't. As always, the class is divided into modules. This time there are six, seven actually, if you include this module zero, which is the, the introduction. Module one is an introduction to monasticism. We're going to review what the Catholics do and what the, what the Buddhists do and what other people, what other pagans are doing. We're going to talk about a foundation of spiritual practice. We can't talk about everything we covered in all of the 11 modules in course five, but we can talk about enough to give those of you who didn't take course five um, a, a good foundation and to bring to the forefront for all the rest of us those practices that are especially helpful in a monastic setting. So we don't have monastery, physical monasteries, or at least very few of them. What are some makeshift monasteries? What are some ways we can build a refuge for ourselves without going off on a mountain somewhere and living in a cave? Devotion, discipline, and contemplation. At the core of monasticism are these three things. Um, devotional practices, the discipline to do them, regularly, no matter what, and contemplation, you know, sitting quietly and, and listening and, and letting the gods speak to us, letting nature speak to us, um, contemplating these practices and, and what they might mean for them. This is the, this is the core of, of monastic practice. So very few monks both in ancient times and medieval times and today, very few monks um, spend their entire day in prayer and contemplation. Most of them have jobs. Um, some monasteries um, are famous for making wine or making beer. Um, in medieval times, there were the scriptoriums where the, the monks were copying scripts by hand because printing press hadn't been invented yet. Most monks have some type of monastery job beyond just prayer and meditation. What might your monastery job be? And finally, building a monastic life. How do we take all these things and put it together at whatever level is right for us and build a monastic practice that draws us deeper to our gods and ancestors and our, our sacred traditions. So as I was putting this class together, I had given, ex I had given almost no thought to a patron. 
I was thinking this class probably wouldn't have a patron. And then as I was trying to come up with something for the the uh, the title slide for the class, I looked around and and I saw this photo from some time ago, and it became very clear. It's obvious who's the patron of this class. It's Brigid. Um, the are the goddess and the saint the same person? I tend to think not, but but I think they're playing on the same team. Um, I've visited two Brigadine convents, uh, one at, in Kildare in Ireland, uh, Solas Bridge. Um, the nuns there are just wonderful people and just the the height of hospitality and and they they're nominally Catholic. Well, no, not now. They're officially Catholic but they make it clear that what they do is open to people of all religion and people of no religion and they were they knew we were pagans when when we visited and they could not have been could not have been nicer and and more more welcoming to us then the other brigadine convent i've visited is in san antonio in texas um bridget's place and these nuns are a little more traditionally Catholic, but still very open-minded and very welcoming. And um, so it's obvious that Brigid, Bridget Brige has a connection to monastic practices, certainly um, in the Christian era, and I think also in our modern pagan era. In any case, Brigid is our patron for this class, and we will open all the modules with prayers to her. Who should participate in this class? It's intended for pagans, polytheists, and witches, the, us the usual people who take these classes. But it's open to, and I think suitable for, anyone interested in deepening their spiritual practice. If um, Again, if you're no matter what path you follow, if you feel called to monasticism, I think you will get something out of this class. There are no prerequisites. Again, you don't have to have taken course five on spiritual practice. Uh, you don't have to have been called to become a monk. Um, you're interested in the class? Sign up for the class. Who should not participate? As usual. Anybody wanting to proselytize for anything? Anybody expecting universal religion? It's not all the same. Uh, Catholic monasticism and Buddhist monasticism and pagan monasticism share a lot of technologies, but we work from very different foundations and, and it's not all the same and that's okay. Um, the, the, the solution to religious strife is not to pretend that deep down it's all the same it's for all it's for us to all understand that that it's all different and that's okay and we respect and support each other along our way even if your path is not my path this is a pagan class presented from a polytheist perspective if you've taken my classes before you know exactly what i'm talking about if not well this is this is what it means. We will be we will be working from a polytheist perspective. Course format is the same as the other uh, other classes. There will be weekly videos. They look exactly like this one. There will be an opening um, there will be an opening section of live video. Um, then we will go into the 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 presentation exactly like you're seeing here. It is on demand. Each module will be released early on Thursday morning. You watch it when you're ready, when you have time. Um, hopefully you'll do the homework before the next class is, before the next module is released the following Thursday, but, um, but it's intended to be on demand for you to do it when it's convenient for you. Um, that also means this class is going to still be here in 2023, 2024, 2025. Um, so if you're looking at, if you're watching this video right now and it's you know, the, the, the initial run of this class is long past, yes, you can still take it. You can still sign up for it. Um, 
You won't be able to participate in the video Q and A's, obviously, but everything else is is the same as it would be if you were taking it uh, when it went out for the first time. There will be required reading this time. Um, polytheistic monasticism is is required reading. Um, we're not using it as a textbook, but we but we are going to um, to use it as a reference. There will be homework. I stopped doing homework reviews a couple of classes ago. Most of you weren't doing it, and even fewer were turning it in. Um, I, you're, you know, you're, you're a grown up. You, if, if, if you find the homework useful, do it. If you don't, then don't. That's entirely up to you. In place of the homework, uh, I've added video Q and A's. So you send me questions and I will answer them on video. Uh, there will be two Q and A's in this course, one after module two and another one after module five. Required reading is Polytheistic Monasticism, edited by Janet Munin, published by Moon Books, came out in April. What are there? It's, it's not part of the Pagan Portal series, but it's it's about the same size. It only runs 120 pages. Um, it runs. It costs like $12 from Amazon, uh, about half that on uh, on Kindle. Um, you can read it in. You know, I read it in a couple hours. Again, we're not using it as a textbook. I'm not going to be lecturing from it, but are going to use it as a resource. Some of the stories that that people are telling uh, are very useful, and I think many of you will relate to one or more of the stories. I don't know everything about pagan monasticism, so I'm bringing in some guest speakers this time. The first guest speaker will be Janet Munin, who edited Polytheistic Monasticism. Janet has a um, a long history of, of, of spiritual practice. She edited this book. That gives her probably the best high-level view of what pagan monasticism is and the many ways that it can be practiced. Siren Nagakiri. Um, of all the people who have chapters in polytheistic monasticism, Siren um, is most devoted to, to extreme simplicity. Um, she says in her chapter that this is um, this was out of necessity, but it's become part of her practice and I'm very eager to hear her story of how um, how she does this with with not a lot of of financial resources. And then Kimberly Kerner, um, that's Kim in the picture below. Um, Kim and I have been friends since we met at a Druid gathering in um, in 2009, and and we we don't see each other very often, but when we do, we tend to get into very long and deep conversations. And I knew I wanted her perspective in this. Uh, Kim's day job is as a uh, an anthropology professor, so she comes into she comes into monasticism as a druid and a polytheist, and also as uh, uh, as, as an academic who studies these sort of things. And um, as you can see, I've already done the interview with her and uh, I found it fascinated, fascinating. Um, the format is interviewing. These will not be guest lectures. Um, I ask questions and they answer. Um, it's mostly them talking. You're gonna hear me talk enough. Um, so I ask the questions and then shut up and let them talk. So you're mainly going to be hearing them, but it is in an interview format, not in not as a guest lecturer. Recommended pre-work. If you took course five, I suggest that you review it. Um, it will go into more depth than, than we've got time to go into in this class. Again, that's not required. Um, if you didn't take course five and you want to take this one now, sign up for it now. Um, if you're trying to decide one or the other, 
I would suggest you take the spiritual practice course first, but um, you know, that's up to you. It will work either way. We will cover the basics of spiritual practice in this class, but not in the depth that we did over 11 weeks in, in course five. There is a private Facebook group, the same private Facebook group we've had since the beginning. It is a secret group, so only members can find the group and see who's in it and what they post. So you can't find it. I have to send you an invitation. It's a good place to ask questions. Now, I'll be happy to answer your questions, but maybe you want another opinion. Maybe you want another perspective. It's a great place to say, hey, this is what I'm experiencing. What do you think about that? You've got some really good experienced practitioners in, uh, in, in that Facebook group. Lots of resources. So uh, uh, I'll be happy to answer it, but I'm not the only one who, who can give you a good answer. It's a good place for conversation among classmates. It's for all under the Ancient Oaks class participants. So there are people who took other classes who aren't taking this class. Well, there's really not anything in this class I think that I would consider uh, inappropriate for those who, who aren't taking it. There's also a Discord server. Um, I don't participate on the Discord server. I check in on it occasionally, um, but it's there for those of you who want it. Participation is completely voluntary. If you don't like Facebook, you don't like Discord, you don't have to do it. Um, lately, we haven't had a lot of activity in the Facebook group, but I'm, I think this class may bring, may bring a little more out there. We will see. The cost, $60 for the entire cost. Um, the first five courses were 50, uh, course six was 75. This one is 60. I prefer PayPal. The vast, vast majority of you pay by PayPal. Um, it's just convenient. As always, a limited number of scholarships are available for those who are experiencing financial difficulties. The more paid registrations and sponsorships I get, the more scholarships I, I can offer. Um, the last several times, some of you have been very generous about, hey, I want to sponsor um, I want to, uh, here's, here's my registration. I want to sponsor somebody else, or I can't sponsor a, a whole person, but I'd like to sponsor a half a, a half a person. So the, the more sponsorships I can get, um, and I do, sp I do fund some scholarships myself, the more paid registrations and more sponsorships I get, the more scholarships I can offer. Deadline to act to apply for a scholarship is Saturday, June 30th, 2022. Our schedule, July 19th is when this module, module zero is released. Registration opens, you ready to, ready to sign up, now's the time. Scholarship applications are accepted now. July 30th is the deadline for scholarship applications. August 1, all the scholarship applicants will be notified. Thursday, August 4th, is when module one is released. The class runs for six weeks and the last module is released on September the 8th. If you have questions, if you have questions about the course, if this, if this introductory module hasn't answered all of them, by all means, send me an email, use the contact form uh, on the website. I'll do my best to answer. If you have questions during the course, contact me. I will do my best to answer. The response will vary. Um, if you ask a question during the course, I'm probably going to put it in the video Q&A, unless you ask me not to. I may, if it needs a private answer, I'll send you an answer by email. You can ask the Facebook group. Again, I'm not the only one doing this. I'm not the only expert. Lots of people in that group who can be helpful. Occasionally, somebody asks questions that's so deep, I turn it into a blog post. I like those. And again, I am always available to answer class-related questions no matter when you're taking this class. I don't do casual conversation. Don't send me something and say, hey, read this and tell me what you think. Um, don't send me a Facebook message and say, hey, I want to pick your brain about something. I, I don't like doing that. I don't do it with my friends. Um, 
you know, catch me at a pagan gathering somewhere and buy me a beer and we'll talk. Um, if you have specific questions, I will do my best to answer, but I, I don't do casual conversation. To sign up, send me an email, john at undertheancientoaks.com. Uh, let me know you want to sign up for the Pagan Monasticism class or use the contact form. Um, it's easy for me if you just uh, just send me a, an, an email. But if you, want, you need to use the contact form, use the contact form. I will send you a PayPal invoice. As soon as that's done, I will register you for the course. Expect a 24-hour turnaround. Um, if you send me a registration email and I'm sitting at my computer and aren't in the middle of something, I may take care of it in a couple of minutes. Um, if you send it to me late at night, it's prob I'm probably going to pick it up in the morning. If you happen to catch me while I'm traveling, um, it may be more than 24 hours. But in general, expect a 24-hour turnaround. And that's it. Um, I'm really excited about this course. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to do this. And I'm learning as I go. And I've learned some things that I want to share with you. I've got some other people who, who have some experience that I don't have that I want to share with you. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working through this with you. Um, Sign up for the class, uh, order the book, and we will we will begin our journey into pagan monasticism.